My name is Brandon Mims, and I'm running for Compton City Treasurer. Well, I was born and raised here in Compton. Uh, went to Compton schools, uh, graduated from Compton High School. Um, went off to college, came back here, worked here in the city actually for seven years. Um, I worked in a few other places, bought my first home here in the city. I'm um, actually on my second home here in the city with these high property taxes. Uh, <laughs> but I'm pretty homegrown, been around the community a lot. Um, had a lot of opportunity to work in civic organizations um, like the NAACP, served on the Compton Community College Oversight Board, uh, I was on the Compton Education Foundation Board, um, and I'm looking forward to serving uh, as the next city treasurer. Uh, in eight years from now under my leadership, uh, the city of Compton is going to have complete transparency in cash in and out of the city treasurer's office. Um, my key priorities are accountability, uh, accuracy, and responsiveness. Uh, accountability for all cash that comes in and out of the office, uh, responsiveness to residents. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, residents are able to pay their water bills. Uh, business owners are able to interface with the city in an electronic manner, paperless, without having come down City Hall. And then accuracy. Um, I believe that I want 100% cash collection throughout the city. No department should be taking cash. Uh, we need to end that practice immediately. Uh, I think you need to have a, a strong public finance background uh, and some political aptitude. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in political science and master's degree in public administration. Um, I have an extensive financial background. I've uh, worked on some financing deals in the city and in other cities. I think that type of background is necessary uh, when you're looking at the scale of the city's finances, uh, the types of instruments that you're using to make investments at the municipal level. You need to have uh, at least uh, an advanced level understanding of, you know, of those finances. Uh, I have an accounting background, have some experience in accounting, uh, financial management, budgeting, also grants management. I think that's critical when you're the city treasurer so that you can account for funds that are coming in and out of the city, make sure that those funds are being reimbursed in a timely manner so that we don't find ourselves in a $113 million deficit. You know, so I feel like my skills align perfectly with the position. Um, and I feel like I'm the best candidate in that respect. I'm committed to making sure that there are no political agendas in the city treasurer's office. Uh, the city treasurer's office is not a partisan place. Uh, it's where the residents banking is done. It's, it's where we are accounting uh, for the revenue for we are custodians of the public funds in that manner. So if any elected official comes to me and requests that I would do something that's not ethical, then I would report that elected official. Um, I think that that's critical that we have that type of culture in the city treasurer's office. And by report, you know, that is conversation with the mayor, you know, the structures that we have in place in the city. But I want to make sure that, you know, council persons and elected officials understand the sovereignty, if you will, of the city treasurer's office as a functional unit of the city, right? You're a department head as the city treasurer. You have employees. Um, if your employees see you doing unethical things, then they may engage in um, unethical behavior, you know, like stealing money. Um, so we want to set a good standard as a city treasurer. And so my commitment to the residents is that that will never happen. There will never be an instance in the city treasurer's office where political pressure uh, takes precedence over the public trust. Uh, my money is basically coming from making calls to residents. Uh, I no big sponsors, no big donors to the campaigns. Uh, my friends and family are pretty tapped out at this point, but um, looking to the residents' uh, grassroots. So if you go to my website, you know, it's like five, 10, $15 uh, donation amounts because that's what we've, we've been collecting. Um, we've been moving a lot on voters who registered in the last 18 months. So by Instagram and other social media collecting that revenue too. Um, so I'm not controlled by any private interests. All my money is just coming uh, straight from donors, residents of the city. I think the city charter uh, is a great starting point as, as a place for governance of the city. Um, you know, charter cities feel very strongly about, you know, their charters and the fact that they have that independence. And so Compton is one of those cities. What I would like to see, however, though, is some progressive charter reform. Uh, we've recently gone through charter reform in the city, but it was largely to tackle, you know, uh, changes for updates and grammar in some situations, uh, just to make policies more clear. But what I would like to see is us take a more progressive approach with the charter. Um, 
look at how we can include neighborhood stabilization plans, uh, look at what we can do to redirect money that's going into public safety as part of our governance. Um, right now, uh, the city is averaging about $250 million, $69 million of that is general fund, up to $24 million of that is going to the sheriffs. Um, I think if we looked at 5%, 10% cuts, we could see programming back in our parks, you know, where we are. So, uh, you know, I have a progressive idea of how we could look at the city charter um, and bring a commission around, especially around the finances, um, open up transparency for the residents and perhaps create a finance reform committee that's made up of residents. Yeah. Right. Uh, the good thing is I'm going to protect everyone's money <laughs> in the city, right? So uh, there's no, in my opinion, when, when it's green, there's no political parties. There's no interest group that is more powerful than another. Once I'm in office, I believe people will align around my good economic policy for the office. Uh, you know, the city is a municipal corporation. Residents are invested. Um, you know, when we see divestment, as we have seen over the last several years um, in the community, people start to, you know, want to get involved. I think that those people who maybe supported someone else but have a desire to be involved will see, you know, that my vision and how we can invest resources back into the community is a is a great plan for the city. So um, I haven't run into too many people who don't agree with me, actually, and I think that's a good thing out on the campaign trail. I'm looking forward to having those conversations with folks who disagree about bringing money back into the community. Right. So our current city charter uh, stipulates that the city charter will, I'm sorry, the city treasurer will report out to the city council. Um, I'm gonna take that uh, very actively. Uh, I think that we need to be doing that in written form, uh, definitely in Spanish to our community, to our residents. Um, I think that we should have, as part of that presentation, the treasurer should have a town hall in districts explaining what the city's investment strategy is, how the investment policy works what current uh, instruments are in use right now to help uh, finance future city projects. We need to be talking about liquidity so we can bring employees back that were laid off. Um, that's important as we have, you know, projected uh, lower revenues, but actually seeing revenues stabilize or increase in the pandemic. Um, we need to be looking at how we can capture that revenue that we didn't expect and invest it in the community. Um, so I feel like as we you know, go forward and in my administration, one of the, the primary things I want to do is engage the community in a conversation about you know, our economics and make sure that they understand that uh, my role is to ensure for the investment of our future. You know? And it's not just an accounting function, it's not just a banking function, it's a collective that we all participate in. Uh, so the city treasurer uh, has a cash balances report um, that is prepared. Uh, you can submit that document to the city. That document is submitted to the city manager. It simply uh, states all of the city's checking accounts and what the balances are uh, on a monthly basis. It closes at the end of the month. Um, as a resident, this information sometimes is difficult to kind of, you know, pull out. What my commitment is to the residents is having a monthly town hall where we're actually pulling that information out and, you know, showing them what these things mean. Right, we have active residents in the city who want this information, who if uh, tasked or if armed, could go back to their uh, representatives, their council persons, and request that services and revenues be uh, you know, allocated a certain way. So that function of the treasurer where you report to the residents, not to the city council, that's why you're elected, right, is important to me. And so I feel that the information out to the residents is most critical. All right, you want to keep the council informed, but I want to make sure that the residents also inform what's happening with the city's investment. So that monthly town hall is going to be a critical piece for that.